Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast, and I am actually with uh, someone, I have a very special guest today, someone who has very, been very nice in my chats, I think the first person to ever give me a super chat as well, which uh, for those who don't know what that is, that's a, a paid comment uh, to uh, you know on my live streams, and that made... The world, it meant the world to me, and I'm so gra- glad to have her here. Uh, this is Lisa. Lisa, say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Steve, for inviting me on your podcast. I am honored to be here. Hey, no problem. I'm honored to have you. And like I said, I, I wanted, uh, and those who have listened, because uh, now by the time I'm recording this with Lisa, not a single episode of this has aired yet. So it's been really hard getting guests because I'm like, they're like, what's the show like? And I'm like, well, I would love to let you hear one, but I haven't aired any yet. Uh, so it's, it, it's, it's, you know, for those who are listening now, maybe this is your first episode. Uh, this show is basically, it's a, it's a spinoff of my main Venom vlog show. And this is where we talk to fans, uh, people who are fans of the Venom universe or the, you know, the characters that Sony's making movies of, uh, Into the Spider-Verse, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of me talking to people who are fans of that and people who make content that are based around those characters or just people who have had me on their shows and I'm just returning the favor. Either way, it's my way of trying to grow the community. And I couldn't, when I was making a list of people, I couldn't think of anyone better uh, you know, to, like when I was going down, I was like, all right, Lonely Symbiote, Swordsman, like I was making all the, the people who usually comment in my threads. And when I came across Lisa, I was like, I got to have Lisa on here. Uh, she, you're always very positive. But what I love and something you even did last night uh, was you were going around to other videos and responding to other people's comments and kind of thanking them for sharing their feelings and and then giving your own feelings. And I thought that was awesome. And that's kind of how we met. So what what is it about YouTube that uh, you know pulled you in to get interactive with the people that make content on YouTube? Oh, it was cat videos, of course. <laughs> 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 no, um, I think. Well, you know, for YouTube, I just started with the typical music videos, and then you know, the algorithms recommend everything that you never knew you wanted to see. Cool. So one thing led to another, and. I don't know, just there were some channels I found. Um, and when I found your vlog, I was so excited because my, especially um, when the Venom movie came out and like for the two years after that, my friends are sick of me talking about Venom. My family <laughs> is sick of it. They they just go dark. You know, so when I found a like-minded community and you're so well, you know, warm and welcoming and so is Lonely Symbiote and the Swordsman and, you know, of course, Eddie. Mm-hmm. It just felt like a comfortable place to hang out, and so I could get my fangirl on on your channel, and <laughs> you know, no judgment. <laughs> no, so. no, we're we're definitely a safe haven, and we we accept all Venom fans because we are Venom, right? Um, right. And uh, and yeah, you, when you started popping up in there, I I noticed the warmth coming from your comments. You're very respectful. You're very you're very kind to people, and that's the kind of you know environment I've been trying to nurture on my channel. I, I definitely like people to challenge me and stuff, but I, I don't I don't tolerate the people coming in with like an extreme, hey you're you know, you're you suck or you know, like the hardcore stuff that I feel like once you start allowing that behavior, that does manifest, right? And it does expand and, and I didn't want that. And I'm so glad that I was able to at least now, because as I, you know, as the channel grows, it might get out of my control, and I'll do my best. But um, I feel like right now, I'm glad I I try to nurture this, and I have people like you helping that, and it, it means a lot. So I'm glad you have that personality, and I'm glad you found us. It, it, it's really great having you on the channel. Well, thank you for the kind words. It it does feel good, especially you know how the comment section, even on a simple news article, can get out of control so fast, and just the so much vile stuff that is said to people I'm thinking would you ever say that to someone's face come on you know so I just I can't hang out in a place like that the outside world's toxic enough I don't need to have it you know in my spare time when I'm trying to have fun that's right and it's so. it's, it's it's funny someone pointed that out to me they're like they're like it's so ironic that you're that a character named Venom and a character Carnage <laughs> and Toxin and you're trying to create a happy environment for that. And I'm like, yes, I am. Because <laughs> um, no. it should be. Yeah, it's like it, we nothing we say should trigger anyone because it's the lowest stakes, right? It's it's just our opinions about a comic book character. It, it shouldn't, like, uh, cause, uh, you know, uh, death and destruction or anything. <laughs> yeah, 
You um, definitely don't want to go to the hell site that is Tumblr then. <laughs> no, I, I stay away from Tumblr. <laughs> uh, I, the there, Reddit, like there's so many places I avoid. People are like, you should go there and it'll help expand your audience. I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm fine at the, oh. rate, the rate we're going. Um, so I got to ask Lisa, like what is it about the comic book world, uh, the characters, how how young were you when you first got into this world, and what were some of the you know the characters that pulled you in and got you locked into this this uh, universe of ours? Um, well, I, without aging myself, I have to say that it was Casper the Friendly Ghost and Star Wars. Sweet. Um, yeah, <laughs> of all the things, I remember having Cracked magazine and Mad magazine, seeing those at you know like the um, drugstore. Mm-hmm. And so I would flip through those just as, you know, family members are getting prescriptions filled or whatever, because there wasn't a video, you know, video game to play. So it's going through those. Um, the store finally got a video game later on. But um, I'm, I don't predate video games. Let's just get that straight. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think because reading comics is a different form of reading and it's you're combining the visual and the visual, when it's done right, it makes such an impact on the story, which is condensed. And so I just, I love the format of it. It's it's hard to read if you're not paying attention to it. I mean, you have to focus if you want to enjoy the comic for what it is. It's and so I enjoy that. That's very true. No, I like that. I like that positivity. And, uh, and that's so cool. Casper the Friendly Ghost. You know, I haven't had anyone mention him on the show so far. <laughs> and... I actually grew up a, a Casper fan, and I, I but I I'm more of a like I, I he was around as like a you know rerun type things when I was a kid, but it was definitely the movie in the '90s that I I was actually a little too old for, but I uh, I think I was like maybe 15 or 16 or something when it came out, but I took my little brother to see it, and uh, and he loved the movie, and and me I got like my first crush on uh, Wednesday Adams who was in that movie, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and I'm blanking on her real uh, Christina Ricci. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah no that's so cool that you liked Casper. Uh, what was it about that character that kind of just you know uh, we warmed up to? Anything that's fluffy, adorable, cute like that, you know, that just wants to do good. But he's kind of so there's kind of like a thing with him that's kind of like a Venom thing, uh -huh. where they they're frightening to other people and inside. You know, when Venom's on his best behavior, he's like, hey, I'm a good guy. But the public doesn't look at him that way just because of his appearance. They're like, whoa, you know, you do one frightening thing and now you're marked. And so you're trying to show everybody, hey, I'm a cool, good, you know, ghost. <laughs> right. I'll help you. But the public, you know, freaks out. And so there's a little bit of a parallel there that kind of identified with. And I just kind of like it. Um, something. Yeah, no, that's great. Is that is that something... Is that something that stands out to you about Venom? Is the fact that um, that he's misunderstood on that level because of his looks? Oh my gosh, misunderstood creatures! I'm a sucker for him. Yeah, <laughs> I am a real sucker for him. Like Frankenstein, misunderstood creature. That's how I always have a take on them because I'm just a big romantic sap that way. So I always the overcome your inner nature and become a better person, being hopeful like that. It, yeah, being misunderstood and then trying to overcome to show that you are better than what people perceive you to be. I just, I, I like that. I just like that concept. It's a hopeful, cool concept. It, it is. Uh, you're, wow, you I didn't realize how much you were going to speak to my heart in this episode. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I grew up, I, you know, I talk, I've talked about it before. I get very candid um, about my childhood and, and how, and how bad it was at times. And, it actually led to that kind of complex for a while. I had someone uh, uh, describe that to me about how how I felt like an like an ugly being walking through the world, and it made me relate to characters like that. And I gotta say, to me too, um, even though I've never uh, talked about it too much on the show before, that is an a, an appealing thing to me about Venom as well. Is that he looks horrendous to people, and uh, and yet he is someone who is trying to do the right thing. Same with Frankenstein, and everything. So. Um, Lisa, you're. I, I, I'm so glad I have you on the show. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what, so, so in saying that, so those are the kind of characters that you know you kind of uh, appeal to you, and and you and you you're an old romantic, as you said. So I love that about that. that that's great. Um, where, like, as you grew up and got more into comics, like, did you? 
start reading them, them monthly? Are you someone who goes out to the store every week to get comics, or are you someone who just uh, picks things up as you hear about uh, you know how they you know how good they are? Um, I was I was an absolute out of comics until very recently. I put them away. I didn't have like the subscriptions. I got them whenever you know as, as growing up whenever. I saw one that I was interested in or, you know, family member gave me one or I was at a friend's house and read one. Um, but so I never was like a hardcore follower of Spider-Man and that whole evolution. I remember seeing Venom for the first time when I think I was at the drugstore. I remember flipping through ASM 299. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why it's imprinted in my head and my memory is actually thinking, is this even a real memory? <laughs> so when I first saw the back of ASM 299 and that picture of Venom is still my favorite ever. To me, he was like, I didn't even read really the story. I had no idea what was going on. I just saw him and I thought, oh my God, he's beautiful. What is he doing? Because <laughs> you could tell he was a villain, but he was so adorable with his little teeth and his claws out. I just I fell in love. And then I didn't pay attention to anything. I saw ASM 300 for sale. I saw the cover of it. And, and I, of course, didn't buy it like an idiot. Um, and then I put it away. Then I saw some other covers, Lethal Protector. I saw him. And I didn't start actually. I collected a few of them. And then I don't even remember what happened to those books. I know some of them got water damaged. And I, some were lost in you know moving and that kind of thing. But it wasn't until a Deadpool movie when I even remembered that I even loved comics. I couldn't even believe that it was never just life took me in different paths and I just it was it wasn't that big of a passion and so now it's a really big passion so it's kind of weird I'm almost kind of like a newbie almost that's no that's amazing uh no I, I hear that a lot I mean we you know I've I worked and specialize in a lot of different things for fandoms like I worked at Lego and then I worked in comic books and I run into that all the time where people go, yeah, I was into it when I was younger and then completely lost track of it, and then now I'm back into it as an adult. And uh, I, I love that. I love hearing stories like that, and that happens way more often than you think, actually. Um, I would say probably like 80% of the customers that came in to talk to me at Lego who were adults had that exact same story you told me. Um, so it's funny you mentioned that first image of 299 Venom, uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Because I had actually two people on the show that remember that image, and they're still to this day terrified of Venom because of it. <laughs> and uh, and that's what the the beauty of this show is. It's like it it really I really want to show people out there that look, man, look at all these different opinions about this character that we all love on some level, whether we're afraid of him or we like him or he invokes you know th- in memories of our own or, or helps us deal with something or get over a hurdle like that's the power of these characters and and that's why I focus so much on a guy like Eddie because I think a lot of us do just root for the guy I think because he in some way represents us and how we can fail at things and uh, and he makes it makes him an every person which I really like it's just like Peter Parker's an every person but Eddie I feel like fails a little bit in a more realistic way a way that any of us could really fail um, and that's what I like about him. So, with with you coming back in, you know, to and you said Deadpool. Now let's talk about that for a minute, because because obviously we had you know, MC because a lot of fa- fans I hear they got back in when the MCU started with Iron Man and and Thor and Captain America. So what was it about those that that you were like, all right, these are neat. But what was it about Deadpool that was like, okay, this is this is the thing that's going to bring me back to comics he's just ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> great answer <laughs> I think um, and it wasn't it wasn't so much the Deadpool comics it was it was definitely the movie right. um, as far as the MCU I saw Iron Man when it came out and it was cool and everything um, but you know there was this, there's the span from like from Iron Man up until probably 2016 where I just didn't care about the universe of anything. I had family to take care of. I had life going on. And so right. that's why another reason why, you know, stuff, I don't have the knowledge of all the continuity of all these stories people talk about, you know, in the Infinity Wars. And I'm like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> so then I see Thanos on the screen and I just want to punch him because I can't stand him now, <laughs> you know. Um, so, so it's that kind of stuff where, 
I saw the movie Deadpool, and I was like, what is this guy doing? And it was so well done. In fact, it was, you know, it was a rated R movie, and it wasn't for kids. That was up my alley, too, because I was, you know, kind of sick of the cutesy stuff right. um, that I was seeing. And so it was nice to actually see an adult movie that was written for adults with that kind of humor, because um, to me, Deadpool should never be, like, rated PG, ever, never, ever. Um <laughs> Fair so enough. yeah, I, I don't know, I just kind of got out of it, and then it was Deadpool, and then actually when that's about the same time, because I didn't see it in the theater, is when I heard about the Venom movie coming out, okay. and then all hell broke loose for me after that, so <laughs> here we are. <laughs> uh, so is it, you know, because I'm thinking about that now with Deadpool, I guess he does kind of fit into um, our category of, uh, of misunderstood heroes because of their looks, right? Like... Uh, um, I, I love that character, but I feel like what what I love about Deadpool is that he makes you realize he's the one who's hung up on his looks, and that's what I really really like about that character. Is it it made me think about that because I was actually seeing like uh you know um, someone like like a sh- shrink type th- uh, at that time when that movie came out, and I remember going in after the movie, I had no interest in De- I grew up an X Men fan my whole life, no interest in Deadpool, never cared about him. I saw that movie because I'm a Ryan Reynolds fan, and I remember just not shutting up in my in my shrink's office like the week later, and uh, they and they they started you know examining that like most uh, good doctors will, and and they were like, what is it about him? And that's when I started to realize like, oh, maybe I relate to this guy too because he feels ugly, and um, is it, but there's a romance there, right? Like, so is that. Is that you know? Is, is it just because Deadpool kind of fits that uh, that type of story that you like? Is that may, maybe that was the reason why it stood out as well? Yeah, I definitely have a type, and it's tall, dark, and tortured, and uh, <laughs> just, I'm a sucker for it. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much in a nutshell. You're you're awesome. Uh, so when so okay so because I, I do want to talk i haven't talked about deadpool on this show yet so i, I am i'm kind of curious uh because i'm a new i'm a newbie fan to him too so have after you see that movie and you kind of ingest the the humor and like you said you know he should not be done and anything less than rated r because it's so effective like the way they do it especially with ryan kind of behind it and kind of pushing for that movie to be made um you know are you familiar with the story of of that movie being a miracle that it even was made a little bit. I know that it took a long time, and I know that um, there was a lot of politicking that had to get done, and that there was, I don't know if the Deadpool was going to be a thing after that appearance of Wade in the X-Men movie. Right. So that little, I'm not too sure about how that all came to be, but I do know it was a struggle to get it done. It, it was actually it was a big struggle as much of a struggle as Venom was to get made which is very interesting the parallels between those two uh, still and the guy who was the one who was trying not to have Deadpool be made end up being the guy who went over to Sony and got Venom made <laughs> so oh, I didn't know that. yeah so uh, his name's Tom Rothman he's the head of Sony but uh, but he used to be at Fox and he was kind of the at least according to the you know conversations online he was one of the reasons that uh, Deadpool was so hard to get made um, but then he comes over to Sony and is like Venom let's do it and so it's interesting uh, it's 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 very interesting so there's a lot more uh, parallels to these things than, than you realize there's a cosmic uh, force behind us all and ha- and leading us all here as fans so after you saw Deadpool did did you know about that X-Men movie did you go back and watch it to see what that version was I did yeah, I did but... <laughs> because I didn't know hardly anything about the X Men. I think I had seen, I had seen something. I, what in the world did I watch? I don't even remember. But I remember seeing um, Hugh Jackman. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what? No, the first X Men movie. My friend Carrie and I went and saw it in the theater. That's right, because she was a huge Hugh Jackman fan. Mm-hmm. And without knowing the story, I remember. Okay, yeah, we went to the theater. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and that was with. The older that was not oh who who was the one that became Magneto um the older actor oh yeah um uh, Ian McKellen yeah Ian McKellen right mm-hmm. so it didn't really appeal to me because I didn't have a clue what was going on sure. um <laughs> you know so yeah th- now that you, boy I can't believe I even remembered that thank you for triggering that memory oh, but yeah. yeah so yeah. seeing so going back to see the the first the X Men movie 
to see Wade Wilson when he popped off the side of the doorway, it you know rang home. I'm like, oh, this is why he hates himself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> by his mocking his appearance in that movie with his you know sewn up mouth and stuff. That was just weird. <laughs> it, was, it was gross. <laughs> so so after you see Deadpool and you're kind of like, okay, I'm 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 kind of clicked into this world now like you said you there was a time where you were going through family stuff and you, and you were work you know you you had uh, you know the real world was was coming at you and i definitely can relate to that and so you found now this form of, of escapism again you're like hey this deadpool character is cool how soon after deadpool did you think oh let's go check out a comic store and and how long and which characters i guess were you you know interested in checking out um when you went to the back to the you know to buy comics Oh, it was it was Venom and Captain America. Okay. And so it was primarily those two. I don't have I have a few Deadpool comics. I mean, I have a decent amount, um, but I never have spent the time to really read um, too much of the comics. I've, I read uh, Deadpool Secret Wars, you know, because that's about the retcon for the Venom. <laughs> right. Uh, and Back in Black. So I've I've read a few of them, and I, I'm I'm. I'm horribly behind in my reading. It's absolutely embarrassing how behind I'm in, I am in my reading. Um, so it was those two because I I like Captain America, but you know he's got a sidekick Bucky, and so when Ed Brubaker turned Bucky into the Winter Soldier, and I found out about that, then there exploded another ridiculous fandom of you know best friends and memory and you know. That same struggle all over again. It's that I have that type, and so the Winter Soldier fit that. So those were the comics I started buying. The first groups of comics were Venom and Captain America. That's amazing. I, I'm a big Captain America fan. When I was a kid, um, so there's a couple comic book characters that I cannot perceive uh, my life without them being there. And it's funny. It's going to sound funny to say, but Venom is not one of them. If you took Venom out of my life as a as a kid and a teenager. I don't know how much that would affect me today. I think I would still have fallen in love with him again, you know, when Tom Hardy was announced to be in the movie. But uh, but the X-Men, I cannot fathom my life without. And they introduced me to Captain America because he used to appear in X-Men comics in the late 80s and early 90s as like a liaison for between human and mutant relations. And I always love the character. Um, I think he's, he. you're right, he doesn't really fit our standard of like, tall dark and and, and disturbed or, or, or tortured um but he's like frankenstein's handsome monster and uh right. and winter soldier is the inverse of that uh he's the one where everything went wrong so when you were reading those comics like you know what was kind of your takeaway did you read the whole run of brew baker or did you just read you know have you only read part part of it i i'm i'm working on it okay. um like all of the other characters i'm i'm getting there i've got to the part um, I actually stopped at the part um, where where Steve realizes who who the Winter Soldier is, and it's that iconic saying where the Winter Soldier says, "Who the hell is Bucky?" Right. And that's where I stopped reading it because I was like, "Okay, I need to put this away. I'm getting way too involved, <laughs> and I have other characters to attend to. I need I have to I have to go to work." You know, I had. I was like, I'm going to get sucked in and I'm going to stay home for like three weeks just absorbing all these and I can't do that. I have to put it away. So I go in little fads with the characters where I'm all about that character for a while and I can't take it anymore because I'm too involved. <laughs> so I have to restrain myself and then go to another one. It's it's really silly. Do you um do you buy books uh, in print uh, and single issues? Do you buy the trades or do you buy digital or a combination of all of them? I have... Um, I have the trades and I have the single editions. I like I've I've developed a it's not a good collection at all, but I um, I just I like bagging and boarding them. I like you know very gently touching them and just seeing the original copy of it. Sure. So digital, I I will read digital in a pinch. That's actually why I bought a tablet uh, for easier reading because I was trying to go read a couple. I think I was trying to read the Enemy Within online in a waiting room. Mm. on my phone <laughs> it was just not, not pleasant so I'll, I'll do it in a pinch but I do like the hard copies I like I, I'm like that with my video games every all my media CDs I just like the tactical physical copy you, you know it's so funny my mom said the same thing about me she's like um she's like up until your aneurysm you were 
hard copies of everything. That's all you, you wanted to preserve them. You wanted, you know, you just wanted them for that reason. You were a collector. It, it showed your collection. Uh, even though I still buy physical comics, uh, most comics I read now are digital. Um, and I just buy like, um, I really only buy stuff to support comic stores. I really, that's the only yeah. reason I buy comic books physically anymore. Um, but when series come out, like if someone's like, oh, that book was good. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I never bought it. So I'll go check it out digitally. I wait for it to go on sale and I pay for it digitally. But I do, I have, I probably have like five or 6,000 now digital comics on Comixology. And uh, oh. yeah, it's it's getting crazy. And uh, But I, I'm with you though. There, there are these times where I'm just like, I need to go hold this issue. I need to go just kind of, you know, be a part of it and, and connect to it. And um, especially with a series like Enemy Within, which you just mentioned, I when I reread that in uh, in print form, I bought the trade, I immediately went out and I was like, I need to find these three issues because that story turned out to be way better than I remembered it as a kid. Um, do you, yeah, do you, are you a fan of Enemy Within? Is that one of your favorite Venom stories? It is. Um, and, and 90% of it, the, the story's okay. Um, I thought it was well done. But what hooked me was, it's what, you know, because it is one of the earlier Venom solo runs. Right. But when, when Venom is pulling Morbius out of the water and the art in there where his hair He's just trash. Morbius is so trash being drugged through the water because he can't swim. Right. <laughs> and I just, even, I mean, I'm belly laughing now just thinking about it. It just, it struck a chord with me of how funny it looks. And that's, the story can be lackluster, but if there's a panel in that book that has me go off like that, then it's going to stay in my memory and become a favorite. <laughs> nice. I, uh, I too have a favorite moment in that book. It's when Morbius and Venom smash through this guy's window and he's like in his robe. Um, and, uh, I actually made a meme out of it where I, I said the guy in the robe was Kevin Feige and, Ve <laughs> and Venom and, and, uh, and Morbius are, they're like, Hey, we're part of the MCU now, whether you like it or not. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh that book has some really good moments and I'm, I'm actually a big Demo Goblin fan. So I really liked, uh, seeing him in that story too. And the art was really good in those 90s miniseries because there is a ton of them and obviously I'm still kind of wrapping those up uh, as of recording this um, you know I'm still wrapping up those reviews but uh, but by the time this airs I'll be done with them but I'm kind of curious did any other ones stand out to you as favorites yeah once once the symbiote quit being Peter Parker's laundry and he started they developed him as his own character I think the enemy within, I mean, Lethal Protectors, you know, stands by itself because yeah. it is the first. But I would also say Knights of Vengeance. Oh, yeah. And um, I would also say the, well, The Hunger and uh, Funeral Pyre because of Punisher. So he hangs out with Punisher. Mm -hmm. So I liked those team, team ups with those characters because I, I like those characters. So th I thought those were a lot of fun. I hated the madness. Absolutely hated it. <laughs> but, oh. Yeah, that's uh. Usually, when I tell when I tell people the madness is one of my favorites, they go, "You're a crazy what? person." <laughs> oh yeah, I, I love. Well, I should say this: the storyline is is not a, a favorite of mine. Um, but I'm a big fan of Kelly Jones's artwork. I I grew up reading a lot of Kelly Jones, like Dead Man and Batman stuff that Kelly used to do. So I liked the style on Venom, um, and I like the look of Venom with multiple heads. That's actually my favorite look for the character. And uh, and so much so that Kiana, who does the channel art for my channel, uh, sh I asked her, I said, hey, can you add more heads onto my shoulder, like the Madness style? And she was like, I guess, sure. Um, so, uh, so visually, and plus I'm a Juggernaut fan, but no, I would say the story is not one of my favorites, but it is a very memorable one for me because I like the look of it. Uh, it's, it's purely a, a visual thing with me with that. But, but Funeral Pyre, I agree. And that team up with Punisher is great. Did you read... Have you got into the anti-venom stuff with Eddie Brock yet? I did. I did read anti-venom, and I thought it was fantastic. Did you read the one where he teamed up with Punisher as anti-venom too? Yeah, that's the the um, new ways to live. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah, where they have to go, um, they have to go rescue the drunk, the junkie from the drug cartel and Punisher with his battle van, he's like just inches away from blowing and I ran him away at any minute. 
<laughs> just there's a lot of tension between the two and you know it obviously gets all sorted out in the end but i thought it was fantastic and anna venom looks amazing he's great oh my gosh. yeah he's got a yeah. great look you're right that's a great design um is so i love that you're a punisher fan too like i, I think him and him and uh and eddie teaming up is is it doesn't happen it only happened like once or twice kind of like when daredevil and venom team up it's very rare um but when they do i love it it's 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 magic like i don't know why it doesn't happen more often i would love a min i would love a six issue miniseries uh with punisher venom and daredevil all working together on something that would be amazing oh i would pass out from joy um because <laughs> it's like uh on trial with daredevil uh -huh. i mean you just you did a couple of episodes and i watched those episodes and i i when i first read on trial that's actually when I fell in love with Daredevil, mm. um, just because he was like, "Yep, yeah, I'll take it on." And yeah, he's oh, I love him. <laughs> he talked about overcoming obstacles. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's one of the few. I think there was another character named Hornet uh, at, a, at a short time in the '90s. Uh, these are characters with disabilities that um, that still go on and and do heroic things. Unfortunately, Hornet, they, uh, Mark Millar killed him. Uh, so I, I, I forever hate Mark Millar for that, uh, but uh, yeah. but but um, but no, yeah, Daredevil. I really do. I, I like that message and I like that thing. And I've been reading the current Daredevil book. I know you're kind of behind on some of the stuff you're reading, but if you ever get a chance to, I can't recommend it enough. I think the current Daredevil book is the best book Marvel puts out right now. Oh, I have them. They're oh. they're on the stack too. Uh, yeah, I've been buying them. Um, nice. Yeah, and what? Oh, the author is escaping me right now, and that's really embarrassing. Uh, Chip Zdarsky. Uh, Chip Zdarsky, yes. Yep. So it's really it's really cool seeing how these authors make the rounds with their characters. Um, some they do very well, and then others it's like, what is this? Um, <laughs> and so I know I've read some of his other stuff. It's just kind of escaping me right now. I think he's actually written a couple of Spider-Man or Venom books that I've read. I want to say that's a thing I'd have to check. Yeah, he did. I, I think he did a... a some issues of maybe spectacular spider-man or friendly neighborhood spider-man one of those um yeah and then he uh he actually did i'm a big fantastic four fan and he did a marvel team up that was uh the thing in johnny storm when uh when mr fantastic and invisible girl were missing he had the other two members of the fantastic four go create a new fantastic four team in search of uh sue and and reed and, reed. and it's amazing uh -huh. it's amazing i gotta say it's like the 12 of the best issues of Fantastic Four stories I've ever read. Um, but it's it's funny. Yeah, you're right. There are some characters. That's why every time a writer is announced, like, hey, they're going to go do this new book. Even if I didn't like their previous work on the previous book, I'm always going to give them a chance if I feel like there's potential and strong writing there because uh, because sometimes it is. You've got to find your character. And sometimes it takes writers a while. Some Some writers are built for five or six different characters other writers are built for one or two some are built for 20 it's it's you know it's really hard and so uh so in that i think that actually is a great segue to something that i know a lot of people who watch my show we do disagree on um i think one thing we can all agree on is i would say donny cates is a good writer i know he is because i've read stuff of his that i love but with venom i'm very critical of it i don't hate it it's certainly not my least favorite venom stuff i've ever read but i do get critical but I'm kind of curious, where do you stand on the current Venom run, and 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 if you are enjoying it, what are some of your favorite moments in the book so far? I had I stopped reading it at uh, issue number twelve. Okay. So I have them, all, um, and I actually started buying uh, his other stuff. I asked um, the guy at my local LCS. I was like, you know, because I was starting to struggle with Kate's right from the start, mm -hmm. um, because he's you know, going against everything that I felt about the character. Sure. Being a romantic fact that I am where, you know, I think that they're, you know, best friends and here this is all this angst, constant angst and tension. Right. So he recommended, um, I want to say it's God Country? I yeah. Think that, I think it's God Country. Yeah. So I, he told me what God Country was about and so apparently it has to do with the loss of his father. There's a storyline of the loss of the father in there mm -hmm. and then the father gets a sword which kind of makes me think that maybe at the time he wrote God Country, that little necro sword that's coming into play, maybe that was a thing. I don't know. Yeah. 
but I, I had to, it, it sounded like it was like a book written while someone was grieving and I didn't want any part of that because I was doing the same at the time so I put that away but then Redneck I found out about Redneck where it's like hillbilly vampires or something <laughs> so I'll give that a go I mean I want to give him a fair shot because he some of the episodes or issues of Venom that I've read they have he's got a good way to write right but oh my gosh it's just brutal I <laughs> The fourth book, I was actually crying in the fourth book, oh, and yeah. it was, and I, I don't remember what panel it was. There was something in there that just triggered me to cry, and then he turns Venom into a dog, and you know, <laughs> then they go to San Francisco, and that's when I was like, I just can't, I can't deal with this. I am not in a good place to be reading you right now because you are so dark, and you've gone against what those have come before, and taken some of it and then twisted it. And just made them this pathetic creature. Whereas if you read, you know, read what Costa did, they had, you know, a little baby sleeper, and it was, you know, kind of it was tension and stuff, but there was a balance. Right. And there, I don't find any humor in anything Donnie's writing, and that's why I love Venom so much because he's hilarious. He's witty. He's a brat. He sings when he's swinging. He sings. You know. <laughs> yeah. The, and the Venom Man song. That's my Venom. Yeah. So Donnie. He's not writing my venom. He's he's writing his venom, and that's cool. Make a million bucks, do your thing. I commend him for it because I'm I'm never going to have a venom comic published probably. But I had to put it away, and then I meant to get into War of the Realms, and then go back to it, and I just haven't. Um, and I haven't read the Absolute Carnage. I have them all, so I'll get there. Okay. But I keep up with what's going on, so I mean I'm not worried about spoilers because to me, Venom's kind of too hurt right now to be spoiled. <laughs> Yeah, there's this this thing that I've noticed because I mean it, it happens every once in a while because I've been reading comics for thirty years now and there's there are cycles as new writers come in they tend to mirror the writers that that inspired them and I feel like sometimes they take the right message from the writers that inspired them and sometimes they take the wrong ones and what I see a lot in the past like ten years is this thing where they writers want to come in and deconstruct the heroes and they're like I want to break them down to nothing and then rebuild them back up into something. And although that's a, it's a fine idea to do, but I feel like when you drag that out for 25 to 50 issues, which is what a lot of these writers are doing nowadays, um, then it, it kind of loses it because, you know, you, no, I personally am like you. I don't want to read 50 issues of Downer. Um, to me, that doesn't help set up the reward at the end for that long. If you want to write 12 issues of a Downer, but then by issue 25, you know, it's back up and it's back into the, the, the light and everything, then that's fine. I could probably stick with you because that's a two-year run on a book and that's that's pretty good. You know, that's a one year of down and one year back up. But anything longer than that, I can't commit to it because it, it is, it's too miserable and uh, and I don't like I don't like the parallels. Like, for example, Abyss, which is the second story you mentioned where you had the dog and went to San Francisco, that dealt with um, child abuse and I really struggled to get through that story on a personal level. Um, and even though they kept it semi-watered down of how much abuse was there, it still was too much for me. And uh, and I was like, well, if, if this is where it's going to keep going, I can't be on board with this. So I, I feel your pain there. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that we have that collective pain. That's a, And sometimes it's okay for comics to shine that mirror on us and make us aware of things. But sometimes it is too much. It's too overwhelming. And it's it's best to take a step back. So it's I'm glad you did. I think that's good. And when you're ready, you can dive back in and, and get back into it. Because I saw you commented on Swordsman Review. He made a review of uh, Absolute Carnage. And I actually saw you're, you were very awesome. You were like, hey, you actually make me want to read this. And, uh, and that's what, you know, that's one of the benefits of the show is I give my opinion. I don't want everyone to agree with me. I, I like people who disagree. And Swordsman's one of those guys who's really great. He likes to challenge me. He likes to give his, uh, you know, opposing opinion. And I like that. It meant a lot to me that you read his comment and that you commented on it uh, and you were so positive. Um, what kind of made you want to do that when you saw his comments? Um, well, I liked that at first he didn't know if he should even be writing that there because I do that with comments too. And, you know, I've got tons of channels where I've just blathered on in the comment section just because I, you know, got on tear for something. It could be an Australian bat video and yeah. something's cute and there I go. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> start blathering on about stuff that no one wants to read. But he just, I, he put so much thought 
into what he felt about the run and he was really objective and I really appreciated that because I've heard a lot of people really like Absolute Carnage Mm -hmm. and so if I was just to judge the books based on some of their covers I would probably have never read it because as much as I love Ryan Stegman's art holy cow that's some vicious stuff going on with those symbiotes I mean they're all jagged edgy and all teeth and the spirals on there I just it's not for me but the story sounds intriguing enough. It, it's just, it's such a huge event. And then all the tie-ins, and that's what Kate's does, that I, it was, I was worn out just thinking about it. So when I read what Swords, Swordsman had to write, I thought, all right, you know what, I'm in a better place. I'll, get, I'll have a go at it. So I can't just pick up with issue number 13. So I, I do this to myself, and this is probably why nothing ever gets completed as far as comic runs or you know movie runs or something. Sure. I decided I'm just going to start from the beginning, and we're just going to do Venom from beginning to finish. So I just last week got done reading Secret Wars again. So that's where I'm at. And so I think I'm on – I just read ASM 253 two days ago. So that's how early I am into the symbiote world again. And Secret Wars, oh, my gosh. That's that's some of the best writing I've ever read. It's and the art, it's hysterical, absolutely hysterical. That's my kind of comic. So Kate's, I respect what he's doing. I appreciate he has the talent. Yeah. And I, I really respect that he he goes there, but with him, everything's such a big epic event. I feel that it doesn't have to to be that to have his mark on the character. He didn't have. You use the word deconstruct, which is perfect. That's exactly how I feel. I think he deconstructed him too far for my taste Mm. but he did it to take him the character where he needs to go now right it's just like i kind of i kind of resent it a little bit because i'm like you know venom's not a hamburger for you to be a chef with (laughs) and just annihilate you know all the previous recipes in such a way it it, kind of bugs me sure and i I agree with you and and like but you like you said uh, i feel like maybe now that we're over this massive hunt a hump of downers uh maybe hopefully we can get some of that humor and, you know, and we get back to that. Because, yeah, I know a lot of writers do that nowadays, too, where they're like, oh, that's the version you like. Great. That's where I'm going to end. But I'm going to go, I'm going to take them down a different road first and get them back to that point. And although I feel like that's counterintuitive for real growth to the character, to make them, to take them back four steps and just bring them back to where they were before you started, I don't personally like that kind of writing. But I see the purpose of it. And I know a lot of people uh, who haven't read Venom in years are jumping onto this run and really loving it. So for them, I agree with you. Everyone should have their their version of Venom. We got spoiled in the 90s. We grew up with these like great miniseries that had a bunch of great moments in it. This is something for this generation where, you know, Eddie's going to do all these big things with other Marvel characters and fight, you know, gods and stuff and it's you know it's something for them and you and I will, you know, we'll dip back I will dip our toes back in the water as we see fit. Um but that's great to hear, and you're very, and like I said, you're very positive, and you're, uh, you're a great addition to the channel. I mean, I, I really, and I hope other people out there who are listening to this understand. I feel the same about a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys comment frequently. You make, you leave really positive things. Like I said, you'll question me, you'll challenge me, you'll disagree with me. But I love that. That's what makes this community, and I love that it's. Even though we're doing that, unlike everyone else on the internet, it feels like everyone else is is like lying and and, and clickbaiting and 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 trying to trick each other into becoming uh, fellow fans and friends. I feel like we're really trying to make a, a genuine effort here, and to see it grow means a lot. And you're a big part of that, Lisa. And I I can't thank you enough for for being in this community. It it means the world to me. Well, it means the world to have your community, and especially you being so accepting to have a new Venom fan or, you know, a new subscriber that's a Venom fan to your channel. I, I mean, you put so much effort into your videos and they're so well done. Like your interview with Ben Pomsky was next level. It was just <laughs> a natural, it sounded like two buddies, you know, just chatting about his career. And so I really thank you for your efforts because you've got an excellent story. I mean, just the story of yourself and, you know, working with the comics and the Legos and you're writing your own book. I think I, think I heard... Did you say you were writing your own novel, or you had written one? Or I've written a couple. I'm writing one now. It's it's taken a long time because I've I've started from scratch on it twice. Um, so it, it it is a process. People, it's 
people don't realize how hard writing is and sometimes when you have a dream project like the one I'm working on it's even harder because you you overthink it but I'm finally getting to where I could probably wrap it up finally by the end of this year so um so yeah I'm I'm, I'm trying I'm, I'm uh, trying to do my thing and contribute something and, and that way people we could do you know tit for tat almost where it's like hey now I have a book out there you guys can review it and rip it apart or be critical of it and then I get to see how it feels to be like a Donny Cates or someone and hear people's thoughts on my work and uh, I think it's just good to always see things from every angle e even if you have to work really hard to put yourself in the other person's shoes it, I think it's necessary especially when you're trying to make content and try to be balanced and fair and uh, and so it, your words mean a lot to me that's very nice of you to say well, I have a lot of respect for you because the fact that you even put yourself out there is is a huge respect. I don't know that I could ever do that. But your 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 studio where you film behind you, all of your venom, mm -hmm. it looks like a museum. I feel like if I give you fifty bucks, can I just walk through and <laughs> look at everything? So when when you're online, your videos they're visually interesting because you know you're pleasant, you're happy, you're positive, and you're doing your thing, and so you look great doing that but then you've got your venoms behind you so it's it's definitely a venom plot there's no mistaking that um and then you added the lighting but what's cool about you is that you make your interests really interesting so your channel is a place where i would want to hang out even if you weren't talking about venom like when you were playing resident evil and the other night and uh silent hill came up and you and lonely symbiote had just been talking about some lonely symbiote and i had just watched a stream of that Silent Hill game before, and so that was kind of a fun little connection about the you know video games and stuff, which could maybe be another day. But it's just your it's just a warm, cozy place to hang out, and so I appreciate your efforts because I know it's a lot of work. Well, that's that's very nice you say. Well, if you like the Ben Pronsky interview, by the time this goes up, there will be other interviews with other creators that are, that will be up before your episode goes up. Um, so hopefully you'll have heard those at that point. We're doing some time capsule time travel here, uh, but uh, but. I think you're going to really like it and, and hearing you like the Ben Pronsky interview because that interview went so well was the reason why I created the show and you say you were you're scared to put yourself out there but look at that you did here and we've had a nice 45 minute episode together so definitely give yourself a lot more credit because uh, it, no, I know it's hard sometimes to to put your trust in a stranger and, and to be on a, on a show like this and talk about yourself but you were a natural and you did great today so thank you. Well, I appreciate the kind words and the vote of confidence there. That's really sweet. Um, you make it easy. I feel like I'm just chatting with a buddy on the phone. So well, that's, that's all on you. That's what I want to do. I'm, I'm, I like being everyone's friend. We are Venom, so you consider it I'm the symbiote. All of you guys are human hosts, and I'm I'm friendly, man. I'm not going to hide your memories from you. I'm just going to come over and, <laughs> and say what's up. Uh, I'm pre Donny Kate symbiote, uh, <laughs> and we're all buddies. So, um, yes, yeah. we'll have to have you back on at, definitely at some point uh, in the future where we can talk about video games and Silent Hill and more stuff like that because I know we sh share a lot of interest in that regard as well. Um, so any last words you'd like to say before we head out? Whatever you need me to do to help support your channel, I'll do. And I just thank you for the opportunity. And I hope those that listen to this sub to your channel and go back and listen to your previous videos because all of them are fantastic. And the fact that you got to meet Tom Hardy and do the San Francisco thing before you move is next level. I just, <laughs> I'm always going to be a fangirl jealous of you for that. That's just so cool. I'm a fangirl jealous a of me person. too. Thank you. Hey, no problem. And uh, and I, what I hope is that people who are listening to this episode look for Lisa and all the comments and all my videos. And if you see her, you know, have a conversation with her because she doesn't really have social media or any of that stuff. But make her feel at home. You know, uh, you know, listen to her comments, respond to them, uh, be friends. I love seeing that interaction in the chat. That helps the channel out so much. And uh, and without it, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have the motivation to keep going. So, um, so please, you know, make a friend in Lisa. Uh, join her in the chat down in the comments section. And everyone else who's listening, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to get a lot more of you on this show at some point, and you can have conversation with me uh, like Lisa did here. And uh, and I'll try to keep pushing for that. And uh, and Lisa, I'll definitely have you back on in the future at some point. Thank you. I appreciate it. I look forward to it. Site. Like, All right. So have a great. Evening. Hey, you too. And everyone else is watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave your comments down below and we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.